Hi booktube, uh, so it's Sunday, the beginning of another weekly vlog. I'm just here with my intentions for the week. Um, I do intend, <laughs> hopefully, at some point to wrap all the new books I've recently been um, hauling. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, reading wise, um, on my ebook reader I've been reading The World of Yesterday by Stefan Zweig. I'm 11% done. I'd like to try and finish this this week. That means about like 50 pages a day, which might be doable because I have a few days off this week um, that I should be able to hammer that out. And the writing is just so beautiful that like I really don't want to put it down when I am reading it. Um, and I, it kind of sucks on this thing because I can't highlight and and uh, make notes and stuff like that, but. I'm really uh, enjoying the writing style and the uh, the insights that he's coming out with. Um, right now he's talking about like education, which is really cool. And before he's talking about art and how um, the culture of Vienna um, was really about the arts, um, which was really cool. And he also talks about being bourgeois, um, um, you know, having that privilege. Um, and I hope he addresses that more and realizes that that was a, a point of privilege. He does kind of hint at it, um, but I'd like to see um, more of that analyzed. I also am currently reading Dead House Gates by Steven Erickson. I hope to read about like 200 pages in this, which will bring me halfway to the ending. Um, oh, I opened it to almost exactly 200 pages. Um, right there. Um, yeah, I'm, the story's really like got its rhythm going now, and I know everything that's going on. As long as they don't throw anything new in the uh, next, you know, 500 pages almost that that's left here. Um, yeah, it's almost 500 pages left. 834 pages in this book. Um, but I've been reading it for a long time, and I'm really enjoying it. I don't know why it's taking me so long to read. Um, I think because it is so difficult, and there are times where I just don't want to read anything difficult. Um, so yeah, here we go. Dead House Gates and The World of Yesterday are the two physical books I want to read. Well, ebook and physical. Um, and then I want to, I'm very close to the end of The Witcher audiobook, so I've got to choose another audiobook maybe later this week. Um, I'm on the second to last story, and it's really interesting because I watched the TV series first before um, I started listening to the books, and so I have like the images from the TV show in my head while reading this, but there's some there's some stories because they pretty much just took the stories and made them into a TV episode is what they did. Um, so the stories sometimes are better on the TV show and sometimes they're better in the in the books. Um, like there's certain elements um, that are in the books that I would like to see, you know, in the movies and there's or in the TV show. Sorry, and there was certain elements in the TV show that I thought would play better in the books, but. You know, that's me being nitpicky. I'm glad that we have both of these experiences to draw from. So mostly you gotta keep that uh, this Bible study project on um, Sundays and talk about it then but I just thought I'd show you how I'm doing it um, so I have here I'm written down my readings for the month of January it has me reading from the Old Testament and the New Testament um, and they're very short so today I'm reading Genesis 13 14 and 15 all oh, these pages are so thin um, my Bible's old, so its pages are sticking together and stuff. Um, but what I do is I... These bigger tags are from previous readings and just, you know, reading the Bible whenever. Um, but what I'm doing is, like, um, I'm at writing down questions. I'm annotating the Bible. Um, mostly with questions. And then I tag those questions. And then on Mondays, I go and I research these questions. Like, he keeps mentioning Lamech sure and i'm like what what makes him so special because there's nothing else in the bible that makes him so special Thank <laughs> you. 
reading uh, There Will Be Rainbows, a biography of Rufus Wainwright by Kirk Lake. I got this book for Christmas from my brother. Um, and I'm currently uh, got to this really interesting sentence. When Rufus went to stay with Loudon in London in the summer of 1988, it would result in the most traumatic experience of his life to date. Um, and we're finally getting to his life on page 56. <laughs> Um, whereas all this previous stuff has been about his parents. And even still, we're not letting go of his parents. Um, but I mean, at least Rufus is involved in this one. Um, yeah, so that's what we're doing on this Tuesday night. I spent the, uh, whole day cleaning and, uh, cooking, so... That's why I didn't do much reading. How come you get a gun and we only have arrows? Sean sighed loudly. That's how it was. Don't you even know your own history? I don't think we're those kind of Indians, I said. Doesn't matter any to me, Sean said. You still can't have the gun. So it's Friday, uh, January 10th already. I can't believe how fast this month is going by. I hope the year doesn't go by as fast as this. Um, but I'm sitting in my car and I just started a new audiobook and I thought I'd tell you about it. It's an Unrestored Woman by Shoba Rao, um, I believe that's how you pronounce it, and it's really interesting. Um, the premise of the story takes place around the time that um, the partition happened in India, between India and Pakistan, when England was withdrawing, um, India and Pakistan um, split and a lot of stuff happened, um, including a lot of women going missing. Uh, a woman getting abducted. Um, so this is a story of very different uh, women in different uh, time periods even, um, all over the place. It's really uh, quite interesting. Um, and they all seem to have some sort of um, LGBTQ bent to them as well. Um, so it's really quite interesting. Um, Oh, Ed, you're so cute. Hi, Booktube. Uh, so it's Saturday, and I'm here with the conclusion for this week's vlog. So, I'm going to start with audiobooks that I've read. Um, I finished The Last Wish um, by Andrzej Sapowski, um, which is the first first book in The Witcher Chronicles. Um, and I read it because I watched the TV show like everyone else. Um, yeah, and it was it was interesting. I liked all the all the different stories. It was really good having the visuals from the show while while reading. Um, yeah, it was quite scary at parts too. Um, and then um, I started another one um, called "An Unrestored Woman" by Shoba Rao, um, which is um, a, most of the stories take place around the partition that happened. Um, when India and Pakistan split into two different countries after um, the British pulled out. Um, and uh, what an unrestored woman is, is um, during that time a lot of women were um, lost or abducted or went missing somehow. Um, and this is kind of their stories, but every story also has um, an LGBTQ um, representation. I also read some comics. I'm going to pull up my comic. <laughs> oh, oh, it's got stuck. <laughs> I read Dawn of the Arcana by Ray Tomi, uh, Toma, not Tomi, sorry. Um, and this is um, a manga, um, a, a fantasy manga um, that has a bit of uh, prejudice in it. So the royal family all have black hair um, and they rule over the people who have the other colors of hair. Um, and there's two warring nations and to broker peace they send a princess from one nation to marry the prince of another, but the princess has red hair. Um, so it's quite interesting. Um, I found the other volumes online, so I'll read them there. And uh, let's see if I can do this one-handed, because, you know, cats. Cats, right? Um, I read the f nine issues that are out, and I don't think there's going to be any more, of a comic called Fell, by one of my favorite comic artists, or comic writers, sorry, uh, Warren Ellis. He does a lot of crime. One and this one is no different. Um, it's called Fell. It's about a detective named Fell um, who gets sent to this really, really bad place um, and uh, investigates some really interesting crimes. Um, and I just really like the art as well. Um, 
I'll put the name of the artist here somewhere. I'm not really good at remembering names. I only remember Warren Ellis because I seek out his comics. Um, so there's some of the art there. Hopefully there's no glare on the screen. Um, I'm going to zoom in a bit and see how he uses a lot of blank spaces as well. But the expressions on their faces and the characters like this guy um, are quite interesting. And I read another comic um, called Incognito. Um, and I'll put the name of the, the artist and the writer here. And it's about a uh, journalist, a black journalist who can pass as white in the, uh, um, I think it's like the 19th, before the civil rights movement, um, when there were lynchings and stuff going on. He'd go around and um, passing as white, investigating um, um, lynchings and such like that, exposing them and the people. I mean, it's all done in um, black and white, which is interesting. Um, and the stories are really okay. I'm not going to show any of the uh, the graphic depictions there. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's a really interesting story. The artist, um, the writer himself, is um, a, a black man who passes as white, and it's kind of based off a, off a real life um, story as well. Um, and then I read a lot of uh, The World of Yesterday by Stefan Zweig. Um, I'm not 36% read, so it doesn't seem like a lot, but I did read this a lot. Um, there was one day where I just blew through 100 pages, because his writings are so beautiful, and the ideas he comes out with are just amazing. Um, he's talking about, it's kind of an autobiography, but it's more of like, very broad. He says, I don't have, because of his situation, he doesn't have specific diaries and journals and stuff to pull from, so it's just all from memory. And it's really cool seeing all the things that he um, he comes out with. There's a whole, they're kind of based on themes, so there's a whole section on um, sexuality and stuff, um, which was interesting. There's a whole uh, thing on Paris um, and uh, the artists and the ideas around there. And then I finally got to the part uh, where Rufus is actually uh, born <laughs> in here, and it's not so much about his parents anymore, even though his parents come in quite a bit. Um, what I've done, actually, is just skipping over his music um, critiques of his parents' music, um, like Kirk Lake's musical criticism of the, the parents' albums. Because, um, to be honest, I don't... I, I picked this up because I want to learn about Rufus Wainwright, not about Loudon and Martha. Or, not Martha. Uh, Martha's his sister. <laughs> Loudon and Kate. Um, yeah, so I will we'll read his, his ideas about Rufus's Wainwright. Uh, Rufus's music, but uh, right now we're still Rufus is a is a teenager. So yeah, um, that's what I've been reading this week. Um, Ed, what have you been reading? Yeah, anything interesting? No, you just want to eat my finger. Okay, <laughs> so that's it. Have a good week.